In this showdown, we're going to compare the, the commonly kept snowflake moray eel with the less so common white-eyed moray eel and we'll decide, actually, I'll decide because it's, it's uh, my showdown. I'll decide which is the best small moray eel for your aquarium. Actually, no, it's best that you decide it's your aquarium. So in this showdown, we're going to use the five criteria. We're going to use, it's the eel's appearance. It's ease of feeding or care. Is it reef safe? What kind of behavior, personality the eel's got in the aquarium? And lastly, the eel's availability and cost. And then we'll finally decide which is the best reef eel for your aquarium. The snowflake moray is no doubt a very attractive moray eel. It's got that lovely yellow, white and black snowflake and starlight pattern over a white base. Uh, and one thing I've found actually is that no two eels seem to be the same. I've done a fair bit of snorkeling and diving around the coast coast and, and the, the, the snowflake moray is quite a common eel. I've also kept a number of them in my aquariums and I have yet to find two snowflake morays that are the same in pattern, which is quite nice. They are a small eel. Uh, they can top out at about 70 centimetres or two and a half foot. But I tend to find them mainly around the, at least when I'm out in the wild, around about that 30 to 35 centimetres. And I find that they tend to grow to about 60 centimetres or two foot in an aquarium. Obviously with very old specimens, they can go larger than that. They do tend to be a quite a stocky eel. And as they get older and older, the, their girth certainly tends to, to increase. The white-eyed moray, on the other hand, it doesn't have that same beauty that the snowflake has got. It's overall uh, a browny, gray, mottled kind of a coloration. The eels that I've seen footage of in that Indo-Pacific area do have that, that gray, brown kind of mottled appearance, but they do tend to have also a much darker head. Uh, whereas the eels that occur down in towards Australia and these more cooler waters don't tend to have such a dark head. But they all do have that one characteristic of a bright white eye. That bright white eye does give that eel a very comical appearance. They are also a small eel and they're actually smaller than the snowflake. Uh, they, uh, the books will tell you that it sits around about that 45 centimetres or one and a half foot. The snowflake moray is actually a, in the wild, it's a dedicated crab eater. Um, I've actually seen them at dead low tide, out of the water, on a seaweed covered rocky platform, chasing shore crabs. Uh, it was an amazing sight to see. When I have seen them when I'm diving or snorkeling, they tend to be usually around the rock areas and they're poking their heads into all those cracks and crevices trying to find crustaceans to eat. In the aquarium, they're a lot more of a generalist. They will eat crustaceans, but they'll also eat uh, squid, prawns, marine fish. The white-eyed moray is also a generalist. One thing I do find is that the snowflake moray tends to be a lot more of a, an aggressive eater when it comes to striking at the prey item. So that can be a little bit tricky if you're hand feeding them or if there are smaller fish nearby when they're about to strike for their food. They can actually latch on to an unsuspecting fish tank mate without meaning to. So I would recommend using tongs if you're actually gonna feed your snowflake moray. The white-eyed moray is a lot more deliberate in the way it feeds. It's, it's probably a lot more of a, of a reliable leader. The snowflake moray can actually go into those hunger strikes sometimes uh, where it sort of disappears and won't come out to feed for a, a couple of weeks at a time. Whereas I've always found Albert, my white-eyed moray, to come on out and he always feeds as soon as he smells the, uh, the scent of food in the water. In actual fact, he's only one of two moray species that I've kept that will eat pellets. So I like to use the Frenzy Fish Feeds, uh, either six millimeter or nine millimeter sinking pellet, along with my other larger fish in this tank, Albert will come out quite readily and eat those pellets, which is, is actually quite unusual, I think, for a moray eel. It's quite an, amazing, um, quite an amazing attribute. And it can make feeding him a little bit easier uh, if I'm short of, of fresh seafood at the time. My snowflake moray won't touch those pellets. Shout out to frenzyfishfeeds.com.au. Don't forget to type in 
Aussie Aquarist in capitals in the discount code box at checkout and you'll get 10% off your order. One thing you need to keep in mind though, however, when it comes to both these eels in the aquarium is that they are not safe with shrimp, ornamental shrimp. Both will eat not only cleaner shrimp, but they'll also eat coral banded shrimp. And I've actually been quite unfortunate to have that happen to me. So um, shrimp and ornamental crabs, certainly off the list of potential tank mates for these eels. And on that topic, let's talk about reef safety. So both eels are safe with coral. Both eels are safe with anemones. And both eels are generally safe with fish. I say generally because, as I've mentioned, the snowflake moray is quite an aggressive striker when it comes to feeding time and can latch onto smaller fish tank mains, tank mates without actually, you know, meaning to. So that's the only caveat I would put into having them into a community restyle aquarium. I've currently keeping both eels in this estuary style aquarium behind me and they're in there with some smaller, um, like the butterfly fish and there's a small oyster goby in there as well as some wrasse and uh, they're completely safe with those fish. Being eels, neither species are particularly active. They tend to hang around in their caves most of the time. They'll appear with their heads out at feeding time. Because they're, they're carnivores and they can eat quite a lot if you let them, they do produce a fair bit of waste. And so obviously the larger the aquarium, the more dilute the waste will be in the water volume, the easier it would be to maintain a reasonable level of um, water hygiene and conditions uh, in your tank. The, the wide-eyed moray is substantially smaller, so you can get away with a smaller aquarium. But of course, the more tank mates you have, the bigger the aquarium up to something like this 12 foot tank behind me. It's actually quite different. Now I can't speak for all eels, I can only speak for the ones that I've kept, but I have found the individuals of snowflake moray that I've had over the years, that they're a much more reclusive eel. They tend to lie out of sight for much of the time. And very rarely do I find my snowflake just cruising around the tank. They will tend to appear generally only once the scent of food is in the water. Uh, then I'll come out, grab their fill, and then disappear again. In complete contrast, the white-eyed moray eel is actually quite, quite a personality. He'll actually spend most of his time, this is Albert by the way, Albert will spend most of his time actually um, with his head and the front part of his body up and out of the, the rock work, up and out of his cave, and he'll just be cruising around looking, not cruising around, but he'll just be watching the fish going backwards and forwards. The other thing that um, is quite interesting about the white-eyed moray and it happens both in, in my aquarium, but also in the, in the wild, is they often like to share caves with other moray eels, be it other white-eyed moray eels. Um, I've actually had them share caves with um, a green moray. And in this aquarium here, Albert will quite commonly come out of the same uh, cave as Monster, my much larger white spotted moray eel or Gymnothorax centina. Uh, the white-eyed moray eel, Albert, will come out quite readily at feeding time and, and take those pellets. Uh, so because I'm feeding pellets to the other fish quite, quite frequently, I'll quite frequently see Albert. There's no questions asked that Snowflake moray here is in front. It's probably, along with the zebra moray, the most common eel you will find for sale in an aquarium store by far. Reasonably economical to buy as well. You might spend here in Australia between 50 and 100 Australian dollars for that eel as about a 30 or 40 centimetre long specimen. If that aquarium store doesn't have it in stock, they can get one in within a week or two very readily. No questions asked. The white-eyed moray, on the other hand, is not so commonly seen in the aquarium trade. It's a common eel, not as common as snowflakes, uh, I've found, um, at least in this part of uh, Australia, um, I had to have my white-eyed moray ordered in, uh, especially to the aquarium store. Uh, and it set me back about, I think at the time it was about 90 or $100. Now it's time for the verdict. 
the Snowflake Moray is undoubtedly a beautiful eel. That yellow, black and white patterning over its body, the small size, it's readily available, it's reef safe, and it's quite affordable in the aquarium hobby. But for my money, I think the white-eyed moray is the best choice for, for the small marine aquarium or reef aquarium. It's, it's, just, it's just out and about. And, and quite frankly, if I'm gonna choose an eel as a display fish for my aquarium, I wanna see it. I want it to be out and about, and that's exactly what that comical white-eyed moray delivers to us as aquarists. Tell me what you think. Have you guys actually kept either a snowflake moray or a white-eyed moray or both? Leave me a comment down below and uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this showdown. While you're at it, hit that like button, subscribe, share the video, and get ready for next week's aquatic showdown where we, we challenge the convict tang and the clown tang for what is the ultimate reef surgeon fish. I'll see you next time.